So this is this is the patch approval screen, and essentially everything when it comes in is going to be pending approval, unless everything is going to have the default policy pending approval. There's two places where this is. Uh, one is under classification, meaning security rating. The other is by product, and this will break it down to all the different products. And Chris doesn't have all the different kinds of machines being scanned here, um, so you you would have more. You'd have Server 2003, things like that. But the thing to remember here is if you want to automatically approve something or deny something, they have to be approved. Well, it goes by the most restrictive. So you can have it denied on either the classification or the product screen, and it will automatically deny a patch. If you have it approved in one and pending approval in the other, it's still going to be pending approval. So it's the most restrictive. So Chris has it configured here to automatically approve security update. So they'll get they'll get deployed just as they get released. On Patch Tuesday, Microsoft generally releases patches to the public around 11 a.m. Pacific time. So it's generally early afternoon if you're on the East Coast. And you'll see them populate in here under pending approval. Um, security updates, you can do appro approve them right off the bat. That's not a bad idea. As you get further down the list, um, you obviously want to be very careful about approving or denying things automatically. You know. We generally deny feature packs out of the box, feature packs and the tools and the optional software. Um, the updates we've always done on VA is that we won't push out we, we won't push out optional software, but we'll push out updates to optional software. So you can go in here and look at feature packs. Any of these numbers you click on are to show you that category. So these are all the ones in that category. And if you wanted to do, um, I'm getting ahead of myself because this is more one-on-one, -on -one, but the automatic approval status, the first topic was that's how you would do it. If you want to improve, improve security updates, critical high priority updates, automatically you don't approve anything. They just go through, approve it on both sides, and they will go through. Um, on an individual basis, and that's not going to be most of your patches. On an individual basis, you would go on, you know, we do it on Friday after Patch Tuesday. Go in here and you can look at the different categories or you can pull them all up at once to see all the patches. Um, I generally start from the bottom and do category at a time. So feature packs, I mean, those in VA would be denied automatically. Updates, because we don't install or push optional software, we just add, but we will approve updates to it. You know, I would click on these and then go through and look for which of these are actual updates. And if they're an update, I'll let it through. So if they have, if they have Silverlight already installed on their computer. We didn't push it out, but if it's already there, we will update existing software. So that's how you approve. So they have to decide patches. whether they want those things or not, right? Yep. And, if, and, and what you're saying is if they don't want, if they want to deny like all feature packs or all like updates across the board automatically, they can just change that default approval status, Correct. right? By, by clicking on like right. the red X. Exactly. Right. So, so if you want to set it to denied, you just click the red X, and then if you want it to always approve, you click the checkbox, and if you want to just leave it as pending approval, you have the question mark. Now, any um, most of you probably have already um, seen this, but any of these patches, there is the link right there. That'll show you, if you're not sure what the patch is, or it's the same patch, it shows you the details. You can click on here and get the knowledge base article from Microsoft. Now, remember, if... Um, this month was actually a very light month month for patches. Yeah. There are only two or three security up um, bulletins. But the bulletin itself is just the broad, this is the problem we're trying to resolve. Each, so you'll see that perhaps on these sites, there's only three security bulletins. But you'll get in here and there'll be 18 patches. What it is is each patch has a different flavor for the different operating system um, or a different right. office product. So that's why there'll be a larger number than you may expect. And if you, um, so just be prepared for that. Another thing that people, um, we're going to touch on this later, is Kaseya does not, the reason Chris doesn't have that many patches in here is he doesn't have servers checking in. If you have no 2008 servers on your, in your machine group, then you will not have any 2008 patches to approve because it's never been asked for. 
to say it waits for a particular endpoint machine to ask for a patch before it actually adds it to the policy. Um, You're only going to see things for machines that really need them, not just yes, every not, tool that was ever done. You don't have to approve patches that have nothing to do with the machines that you uh, that, that you are actually managing. Perfect. And the last thing that is says KB override. So, well, let me back up. So essentially at the end of, you know, you decide on Friday on patch Tuesday, you're going to go through and approve or deny patches. You would go through and essentially have all zeros here. So that's their, that's their job is to basically clear the pending Clear approval. that out, clear that out, and then keep an eye on it. Now you will right. see, um, you might check a few days later and you find one straggling through. That could be that, that one 2008 server hadn't scanned at that point for some reason. You know, it's scanning once a week, so it scanned the day after that and asked for the patch, which so shows up. So you want to keep an eye on it and make sure you get the patches as, um, and, and have it clear for the next few days because those are the new security patches that you're concerned about. Um, so this should be like so a we'll weekly a weekly task, Jim? Or, yep. yeah. Weekly, if not more. It just only takes a second to peek to see if anything's been released. Right. Um, you know, this will have the published date. And I mean January, you know, tenth optional software, but that's the date that Microsoft asked to release the patch. Now Chris has machines that are obviously behind on some Office patches. That's why you'll get a patch from 2009. You'll see right. that occasionally. And if you add if you add a new machine to your network that hasn't been patched, it's an old machine hasn't been patched in years. You will see a huge number <laughs> under here because you might have. Yeah, all of a sudden. An old 2003 server that hasn't been patched in three years, and it's asking for patches back from, you know, 2006. Right. It shows that everything that's missing. Off. Yep. And with that said, I mean, the last is KB deny. If you really have a patch that, hey, I, I don't want this, I never want this, add it to the KB deny. You put in the KB article number, just the number itself, and then approve or deny it. Jim, and how would we... across the board... No, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, how do we approve, like, let's say service packs, for example. I mean, typically you don't want to approve a service pack, like a Windows service pack, like, across the board, because, I mean, all of a sudden your hundreds of machines would be applying the service pack all at once, and if something's going to go wrong, that's probably where it's going to happen. Um, so you want to kind of control that a little bit. So how do you, how would you push out an individual patch? Well, if you want, I mean, hopefully you have things staggered. And, uh, you know, with, with path man patch management and the four steps to patch management, it's all about spreading things out. You obviously don't want to have everything at the same site scheduled to patch at 9 p.m. You want to, you know, put it in a window, 20 machines, spread it out for 90 minutes and have them patch over an hour and a half. Um, if you want to deploy patches manually, best way to do that, and this is a good page to kind of figure out what's going on with your patching, go to patch update. You know, Chris is going to roll a lot here. You've got to uncheck, remember to uncheck hot machines for automatic updates because those are going to be on your machines because you have them set for automatic updates. You know, Chris only has one, but yeah, you, would like see, one you would see, you would see, you would see, let's uncheck, unchecking this would have hide patches denied by patch approval. So, all right, in the example of service packs, when so, VA would Let's say I want to put Silverlight on all my machines. And, and we, um, you know, we deny service packs and things like Silverlight. So uncheck the hide deny patches for patch approval. Those are ones that we've said no to. And you would come down here and well you're not getting silver no, light. I mean, apparently we have bing, silver bing bar. Hey, let's do the bing bar, yeah. So you would click on bing bar, it'll give you a number here how many are set for automatic updates that are missing. Click on the machines. And it would list all the machines that are missing it. And it would list all the machines. So a service pack that would be denied would show up in here when you uncheck the deny list, you'd see all your machines there. And you can actually schedule it. You can schedule right. it over a period of time. You can you can take ten at a time and do it that way, and 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 run it right away um, by setting the schedule time to you know the right. Time so if you so you might do this like a client at a time using the machine group at the top to limit your client, and then just schedule like hey let's do one client every other day or something. If we're doing say XP Service Pack three or or something like that, that way you're not. Like your whole entire world doesn't shut down if something bad happens, right? You kind exactly. of like limit it by you, one customer at a time. Use your machine groups and your views to, to limit uh, to limit what you're seeing because right. you can only see if you put a specific, specific machine group at the top, it would just show the patch updates for that machine group. Beautiful.